What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome to my banner breakdown of Emblem Ike. So he's a sword infantry unit, I didn't really expect a red emblem unit. I thought maybe they would, you know, mix it up and have a green unit. So here he is with Emblem Ragnall as his preferred weapon. This gives him minus and special cooldown, making great ether into a 3 cooldown special. And then he has got distant counter built in this weapon. And he's able to get plus X attack in the combat and inflict minus X attack debuff on the foe in the combat. Kind of like Ninja Zelgius. And this is going to be going up to 16. So it is going to be dependent on foe's visible attack. So it is going to be taking 25% of that and then it is going to be subtracting 2 from it. So we're going to be able to get the attack debuff on the enemy which is going to be helping you tank better. And then he has got debuff neutralization to all of his stats which is going to be helping you tank duo Sanaki. And then he has got null counter disrupt built in this weapon. So that is just an amazing combo for any kind of omni tank because Duo Leon is such a menace with that sweep effect. So at least Ike is not going to be getting swept by any of those effects and he's going to be able to retaliate back. And then finally he has got Null Guard built in this weapon which is going to be enabling him to retaliate back with Great Ether because of the special jumping that he can get out of his slot B skill. And Emblem Ragnall doesn't really have too long of a description but that doesn't mean that it's not a good weapon. Having Distant Counter and Null Counter Disrupt is amazing. And having debuff neutralization nowadays is also really helpful because a lot of cav lines are going to be having duo Sanaki as well. So at least Ike is going to be able to be three spaces away from an ally and easily tank duo Sanaki with all of the unpierceable damage reduction that he has got. And then he has got his exclusive special in Great Ether. So it is going to be boosting up the damage by percentage of his own attack stat depending on the number of times he has been attacked in the combat times 10 and then added by 40. So this is going to be 60% of his attack if the enemy is going to be doubling you and if they're going to be having the brave hits and the potent and follow up attack and this could go up to like 90% which is quite a lot. And then if he initiates combat he's going to be having the forced foe's first attack kind of like Summer Ephraim and if the foe can make a follow up attack then he's going to be enabling the desperation on them. So this is kind of reminiscent of Brave Ike's playstyle. And he has got a lot of unpierceable damage reduction which is going to be making it easier for him to take a lot of attacks of the enemies. And then he's going to be getting the unpierceable damage reduction out of the special. And the reason why I say it's unpierceable is because if it was pierceable like Vital Astra, they would let us know with another line of text here but they don't really have that. So he's going to be having unpierceable damage reduction kind of like Nabata Altina in a way. So he's going to be having percentage based damage reduction based on 40 minus is current special cooldown count times 10 and this is why the special jumping from a slot B scale is good because he's going to be having like 30% unpierceable damage reduction on foe's first attack and then from the second hit onwards he's going to be having the damage reduction based on 70 minus his current special cooldown count multiplied by 10. So because he's going to be forcing the desperation on the enemy he's going to be eating up a lot of the hits and then finally once he has triggered the special he's going to be dealing 5 damage on foes in 3 rows and 3 columns and also inflicting them with the pulse smoke effect. So that is amazing for a tank especially a tank who doesn't really have the scowl effect. So this kind of pulse smoke is going to be very strong against many of the pre-charged special teams and the 5 damage is going to be making it so that he can easily try and kill the enemies over subsequent turns. And then he heals up HP after the combat based on the number of foes in 3 rows and 3 columns multiplied by 5 and then added by 10. So it is going to be working a bit like engage. So the implementation I really love it for Emblem Eye Care, the 5 damage, the pulse smoke effect. It is all very fitting for great ether and then he has got defense rest finish 4 as a slotty skill which is going to be giving him that in combat healing and the true damage and because he has got null guard it's going to be pretty easy for him to trigger great ether especially with the special jumping that he has got with Lagoo's friend. So this has to do nothing with Lagoo's. It's actually called immovable in many of the other translations of the skill. So Lagoo's friend 4 is going to be an inheritable skill and someone like uh, Brave Dimitri is definitely going to be liking it. But the restrictions of this is definitely going to be interesting. He's going to be inflicting minus 5 attack debuff on the foe in the combat and if the maximum special cooldown count value is add or more than 3, and if you've got a damaging special, then you're going to be trading away 50% of your pierceable damage reduction. Now, this doesn't really mean too much for Emblem Ike because he doesn't really have the pierceable part of the damage reduction in his weapon. 
or in a special, all of the damage reduction that he has got is unpierceable. But if he had to have some kind of pierceable damage reduction, then you'd be giving away 50% of that by piercing your own damage reduction and getting flat damage reduction in exchange for it based on 20% of your higher defense or resistance. So this is going to be working on many of the units that uh, just want to get the flat damage reduction and like I said Brave Dimitri does come to mind and this is going to be working with any cooldown of a defensive special so it not only works for the damaging specials but also for defensive specials like Godlike Reflexes and you also get special cooldown jump minus two to yourself before foe's first attack so this is before foe's first attack and not your own attack so this is going to be helping him have great ether add one cooldown which he's going to be able to retaliate back with and on your special triggers you're going to be getting true damage based on 20 percent of the higher of defense or resistance and then you completely pierce the damage reduction on your special triggers so damage reduction piercing is really good on many of the tanks because nowadays uh, so many nukes have ridiculous amount of damage reduction so this is going to be helping you just kill those nukes a lot easily and the unpierceable damage reduction that the skill gives you is going to be really valuable you're going to be losing out on the pierceable damage reduction by 50 percent but that is the trade that you should be taking because you're getting flat damage reduction that is unpierceable so that is another source of unpierceable damage reduction along with a special which is going to be making emblem ike into one of the best tanks in the game so Lagoo's friend could be a good skill for many of the units depending on its restrictions. I'll probably be making a video on it along with the uses of his emblem effect. And then he has got counter control 3 as a slotsy skill. So this is going to be helping you if you put him in Aetherite's defense or if you use him in summoner duels as a raid boss. And then he has got his emblem effect which is going to be enhancing your special. So if you're facing a ranged foe and if your special or foe special is ready or triggered before or during the combat then you reduce the damage from foe's next attack by 40% and this is going to be once per combat so this is the kind of damage reduction that we have seen before on armored beacon and armored flow so it is kind of similar to that and it is going to be unpierceable in nature and this effect is going to be really good for many of the tanks because this is going to be giving you that unpierceable damage reduction and this is especially good if you are not an armor because you can run other specials and you didn't really have access to armored flow or beacon so that way it is going to be really good for tanking compared to emblem marts emblem effect this is going to be a bit more narrowed down for the tanks compared to the universally useful minus and special cooldown but many of the units don't really want to get the minus and special cooldown because they already have a one cooldown special so they can make use of emblem ike's effect and that is going to be helping them get that unpierceable damage reduction so overall emblem ike is easily one of the best omni tanks in the entire game because of having a lot of unpierceable damage reduction and also having null counter disrupt at the same time. Great Heather is going to be providing you with some good healing for the self sustain and the pulse smoke effect is also pretty unique. You are going to be a bit susceptible to the AoE damage from units like Nabata Gren, uh, but that's pretty much what you'll have to consider. If you run him with Goto then you can get the AoE damage reduction status which is going to be helping him tank even better. He is going to be providing you with defense rest finish for and also Lagoo's friend. As the scale we don't really know the restrictions of it yet um, but overall it's a decent fodder and you could also run fire flood boost 3 in a slot if you do want to get the guard effect because he doesn't really have guard in his base kit so that could be a skill of choice lagu's friend is pretty much made for him so that is going to be the skill you should be keeping in your slot bay and then if you do want to change it from counter control to something else then panic smoke is going to be helping you with the omni tanking with the faux penalty doubler status and Fatal Smoke 4 could also help you against the Miracle effects. So that can also help with the one shots that he's going to be doing with Great Ether. He doesn't really have guaranteed follow up attack in his entire kit. So he's going to be depending on the one shots with Great Ether and the damage reduction piercing from his lobby skill. You can also run attack defense Oath 4. That's also a skill you can run. But in Ether Raids, a lot of times you're going to be needing to put him away from any of your allies so that. Ninja Sanaki doesn't get the things in her weapon. Pre-combat damage is going to be doing a number on him like it does to any kind of tank but then he has got the unpierceable damage reduction to help him with that. So let's hope that he can stay consistent as an Omni tank because uh, that's definitely not an easy thing to do right now but still Ike manages to come out on top with all of the tools that he has got. Overall this banner is going to be giving you the good value in the red pool. But Embla is going to be a bit of a dud and Embla was the reason why I was thinking maybe 
it's not a red emblem uh, hero because <laughs> Embla is so old. So she doesn't really provide too good of a fodder and uh, she's starting to show her age when it comes to Aetherite's defense. But still you've got the color share with Legendary Alencia who's amazing as a support unit and also as a nuke. And then we do have the green pool with a two Nino. And also we have got Sather and Legend Camilla. Sather is going to be a bit of a dud if you're not merging her as part of your mythic core in Aether Raids. Legend Camilla is still an amazing unit to get. And a two Nino also has some really valuable fodder. Colorless is going to be lacking a bit unless you really want to get Tina or Safi. Tina is really amazing in Aether Raids defense and there's also Arvel for that. And blue is easily the most lackluster pool with Legend Female Violet and also Grandpa Myson. Isadora is also there, but I do think that she is a pretty useful support bot with the things that she can provide to you. In April, we do get a banner with the young heroes, so they're probably going to be coming up. And then we're probably going to be getting a batch of new units and also another rearmed unit next month. Double special heroes is also something that they consistently do every single April. And then at the end of the month, we could see a new mythic. So if you're interested in double special heroes, then this is something I'm expecting with Summer Fjorm, Ninja Zelgius, and also Winter Yanaka. And when it comes to the end of the month banner, I think that we could get a colorless mythic unit because Dark hasn't really got any kind of new mythic unit except for like Foss here. So maybe it could be colorless and Ginunga Gap is going to be there. Color sharing, increasing the value and Severa and Rion Reinhardt are also going to be there. So this is pretty much what I'm expecting for the end of the month. You can click the link on your stream right now to check out my review of our free Hero Rises unit, the Tune Peony, and make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube set boxes are about as functional as my hopes of having a green emblem hero. So that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.